Hi everybody and welcome to the Persian Kitchen YouTube channel. My name is Shadi and today I'm going to be showing you how to make lavashak, which is a really traditional uh, Persian sweet. It's something similar to like a fruit leather or if you're a British, um, you know, person, you'll remember in primary school if you're like 20-ish, um, the craze of a Kellogg's fruit winder. So it's super similar to that. It's a really healthy uh, alternative. So the beauty of Lavashak and making it at home is that it's honestly so simple. All you need is fresh fruit or frozen fruit and it can be any kind of combination and really in any kind of weight. So here I've gone for just over a kilo of frozen mixed berries and to this you could even add you know like some like soft plums or some fruit that you've got going off traditionally the idea of lava shack is that it was a great way for households to use up fruit when it was you know on the verge of going off to just prevent food waste so anyway back to the recipe you basically want to have just over about a kilo of frozen fruit in this case and this will make enough by the way to line um, a regular baking tray. So if you want to do this quantity, use just around a kilo, one and a half kilo, and you'll be fine. If you want to make you know, multiples, then obviously scale up. So what you want to do is, on a really low heat on your hob, you want to basically put in your fruits and just cook them for about 10 to 15 minutes on a very low heat. We're not in any rush here, we just want the, the fruits to release you know, their sweetness and their flavors. We're not doing too much right now, we're just letting it all simmer and come to a soft pulp. Um, I've used frozen fruit, as I mentioned, so I won't be adding any water, but if you're using fresh fruits, you could add for this amount of fruit, so around a kilo, one and a half kilos, you could add around a quarter of a cup. So. I just bought these cup things, very easy to get hold of, and this is around, you know, 100 mils, let's just say, of water, just to ensure it doesn't stick. But where these are frozen, the ice particles will help with that. So whilst your fruits are just simmering, you could get going with one of the steps, which is yet to come, which is to line your baking tray. Uh, in the past, I've tried it with greaseproof paper, and it's perfect. But recently I've been experimenting with cling film and also really, really good. And also it's kind of traditional to when we, you know, buy lava shack in the shop or on the streets if you're in Iran. It comes on, you know, that plastic film which you peel off uh, very eagerly. So I'm going to try and demonstrate with cling film for you. This is quite a tatty. It's been used a lot. It's from Costco, so I've literally got hundreds of meters to get through in my lifetime. I don't have enough, and I've tried, but the, like the Costco one, it won't go, you know, it won't stretch enough to fit a regular uh, baking tray slash oven tray. So you just have to do a few layers, and it won't melt in the oven because we cook on a very low temperature. So don't worry. You just want to make sure that basically the the tray is covered, and of course up the sides as well. So that's, that's all good. <laughs> Just check on the fruits, give them a bit of a stir. Seems like not much is happening, so I'm just gonna turn up the heat a little bit to give it a kind nudge. So we've only been going for a few minutes and like now's the time if you, you know, you're just like looking around the kitchen and you find extra bits and bobs that you want to throw in, like you still can. So I'm going to add in these really nice raspberries. So these are really, really yummy. They're like really nice ones from Waitrose. And I thought that I would um, add in some, you know, more expensive berries than the frozen ones that you buy in the supermarket because it will really reduce the amount of sugar that you may wish to add. So sugar in this recipe is entirely optional. Lava Shack is very famous for being quite tart and sour and people really like that. But equally, some people like it super sweet. So many of the ones that we find in the stores nowadays are just packed with sugar and artificial flavors and colorings. So it's best to maybe get the bulk of your thing with, you know, just regular berries from the supermarket in the frozen aisle or even fresh fruits that you've got and frozen. But then top it up with some really nice quality produce 
to just ensure that you don't have to you know, go crazy with the added sugars. So I'm a little impatient. I want to just give it like a really nice blast of heat. So I've kind of put on the maximum just to bring it to that point where I feel like, yeah, things are well underway. So this is a mix of uh, black currants, strawberries, and raspberries and you can learn to play with the like the tanginess of your lava shack by using different kind of fruits in it so if you want something very sweet then obviously stick with you know strawberries you know maybe some blueberries if you want to have a more of a zing maybe go along the kiwi route apricots also a really good one for a sweet one and if you like it really tart you can uh, go with a uh, zeresh which is a barberry that will really make it nice and sour. So the berries have been cooking for around 10 minutes now on a you know medium to low heat and they're nice and soft. Uh, a lot of the water's come out. So now is the time to give it a blend. Now the easiest way to do this is with a hand blender and I'm going to give the fruits you know, a nice thorough blend and then I'll taste it to test if I want to add any sugar. Definitely want to add some lemon juice or lime juice because that will really just enhance the, the flavours of the fruits. But it's really important that we give it a good blend first. Also, bear in mind that I've used quite a lot of like seedy fruit that um, I want to blend because I'm, you know, you can sieve it later. <laughs> So I'm using a very shallow pan, so I recommend giving it a tilt. But if you do it, maybe use um, more of a, like a stock pot casserole thing. But there were just some like induction hob problems, so I had to, had to just make do. This is a good Kenwood one. Kenwood want to send me some free stuff, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that's nice and blended, all the flavours will obviously be uh, uniform and combined. Now's the time to give it a quick taste and see if it is sweet enough for your liking. Mmm. So it's good. I think it's really quite sweet enough actually because I use them really good raspberries but you know let's just be a bit cheeky so I'm going to add about one heaped tablespoon of just regular sugar granulated or caster will be fine but you really can add more and more to your liking just in between give it a bit of a stir maybe wait a minute or two to ensure it's fully dissolved into the flavour. And definitely add the juice of one whole lemon. Give it all a stir. Give it another taste now. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to give it five more minutes, five to ten more minutes actually, just to thicken up a bit more. You can see it is quite thick, it's quite viscous, but I want it to be a little bit more uh, dehydrated, just cooking off some of the excess water in there. Not to the level of like it being in a custard though. So we'll have a look in a minute. Okay, so we're close to this being, you know, thick and ready enough to stop sieving and pouring into the tray. So now's the ideal time to heat up your oven. I live in England, so I'm just going to go with UK temps and stuff. I'm not working in Fahrenheit, sorry. So go to, um, you know, 50, 60 degrees C, basically like the lowest setting of your oven with the fan on. And, um, you know, you need to make this around a time when you won't be using the oven for a good 10 to 12 hours. So this is a, you know, a nighttime cooking session. 
So the oven is, uh, is ready to go. I mean, to be fair, um, I'm very lucky and Silka Kitchens in Hendon, a beautiful designer kitchen showroom, have allowed me to film uh, this video here today. And they have obviously the best and the highest range of appliances, including this great oven, which is a Siemens Studio line. Um, and it just basically heats up immediately, which is so cool. So yeah, if you need a good, good oven, Okay, so this is a bit more viscous than when we started, so... So, one thing you can do is just pour this straight onto your uh, cling film lined baking tray, or if you really want to go the extra mile, you can sieve it first to remove any seeds. So, just put um, like a sieve, a colander over a bowl, turn the heat off, and pour this into your uh, colander sieve bowl thing. And I'll do it like this. This really is a simple recipe. There's honestly just like what, three to four ingredients, i.e. the mixed fruit, potentially water, lime or lemon and optional sugar. The biggest, you know, thing in it though is just time. That's it. If you're, if you're dedicated, it's definitely well worth giving it a go. It's really fun and tasty. So just stir that around. This in here is your beautiful puree. So what I'm going to do now is just go straight ahead and pour this out onto the cling film lined baking tray. And this is where the, like, the quantities of fruit kind of becomes important again. So the recipe I've given you, like 1 to 1.5 kg, is um, that it will produce enough of the puree to fill this to a nice thickness, maybe like three, three, four millimetres thick. Any thinner and there'll be basically nothing to peel off, but any thicker and it just won't ever dehydrate fully to the point where it'll just be wet forever. Um, and you, you know, you basically won't have lava shack. And then pop that into the oven overnight preferably, so a good 12 hours. Check on it every now and then, but you want it to be so that when you touch it, it's no longer tacky. It may leave color on your finger, which is fine, but it just shouldn't be wet. Okay, so to make life easier and film this all in one day, I made one last night and uh, just, you know, MB, I didn't sieve that one but this is what it will look like. And it's been left to cool as well. So you can see, and this was the exact same berry mix, same berry blend. The only difference that this one wasn't sieved, but you can see the changing color, you know, really, really deep, dark mahogany. It, it's not like a wet mix coming up. So this one um, has been cooling for a while now. You can see it's glistening, but it's not wet in the sense of like, it's not like this. I can go like that. And then there's just a tiny bit of like the residue. So I'm gradually just gonna peel this. This is really exciting. Um, gradually just peel this off. Ooh, it looks brilliant. I'm so happy because there's so much time that goes into this. You'd just feel like heartbroken if it just looked awful now. And then I know that I, again, double lined it like halfway through. So just maybe take it up from the other side as well. And yeah, there you have your lava shack sheet. And it looks so good. And like, I don't know if you can see, but when you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see through, you see all them lovely like red tones. It just reminds me of like when I used to go to Iran with my dad and like you'd see these like everywhere. Just, oh, yeah, it's so good. So nostalgic. This is legit, guys. So now you could just eat it all to yourself. Just start peeling, literally, like this. That's how you know it's done as well. If you go to peel it and it starts coming off in tiny bits, 
put it back in the oven to continue dehydrating. But look how easy it's coming away. That is ready. So you could just, you know, get stuck in. Or if you want to share, which is what I advise, now is the time to cut it up into your strips to, you know, share with your friends and family. And you can do this however you like, but you basically want to just have it either that way or this way, horizontally or vertically. I'm going to go for a nice, you know, four centimetre roll. And you want to just turn your cling film in and roll up your little fruit leather cigar, like so. This was so easy to make and I've made it so many times, but every time I still feel so excited. This is such a really natural and healthy alternative to gummy sweets and literally anyone can do it. Now, if you love Lavoshack, given how much time goes into making it, I think it's best that if you're really gonna do it, you, um, you scale up your quantities so you can make, I don't know, fill up your oven with however many trays it can accommodate, maybe like, what, four or five trays? So you can get maximum rolls because this recipe alone made, what, one, two, three, four, only five strips, which, you know, will go very, very fast. So make it worth your while and uh, stock up. Okay, so now these are done. They're, you know, they'd make like a really nice gift. So you can either plate them up for yourself or for your family and friends. And if so, it would just be really cute just to tie them with a little piece of like yarn. And what better way to present them than on a traditional hand-painted plate from Isfahan. So this is a, you know, a really beautiful gift, something that you've made yourself, something that's delicious but not too indulgent, and you know, just so natural. And yeah, I really think you should give it a go. Okay, so let's give the lover shack that we've spent so long making a nice try. So if you've never had lover shack or fruit leather, as non-Iranians would call it, the way to do it is to just unravel your, your strip. You can, you know, tear it now if you want. If you think, oh, that's enough for me, give it a try like that. So you don't have to eat the whole thing. And you simply just go to the corner and peel off the plastic. And there you are. That's it. Just give it a go. I mean, I'm biased, I really like it. <laughs> mm. So let me know in the comments section below if you either love or loathe the Lava Shack. I love a bit of alliteration, me. Um, and yeah, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Also, please follow me on Instagram, at Persian Kitchen underscore. And yeah, stay tuned for more authentic, homemade Iranian food recipes here at Persian Kitchen. Thanks again to Silka Kitchens in Hendon and we'll be back soon.